In this video, we're going to explore some key symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning and who you might suspect this in, as well as ways to prevent it. But before we look at the symptoms, what are the possible causes of carbon monoxide poisoning? Well, carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas that can make you seriously ill if you breathe it in. And some common household appliances that are used for heating and cooking can produce it, especially if they're not installed properly, they're faulty or they're poorly maintained. These are things like gas boilers, cookers, gas or paraffin heaters, as well as portable generators. Also, with the cost of heating ever increasing, you might be tempted to use barbecues or camping stoves inside, but don't do this because this can also cause a buildup of carbon monoxide. So now that we know a little bit more about the causes, well, what are the possible symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning? Well, brief exposure to low levels may cause symptoms such as dizziness, flushing, headaches, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, personality changes or vertigo. With exposure to higher levels of carbon monoxide, symptoms might be more severe. And these can include confusion, movement problems, respiratory failure, loss of consciousness, heart attacks and even death. So as you can see, many of the symptoms can be quite vague, especially with the low levels of exposure. Things like muscle pain, headaches, dizziness and flushing can occur in many other conditions and they're not necessarily specific to carbon monoxide poisoning. So what might make you more suspicious that someone does have carbon monoxide poisoning? Well, thankfully, there's a useful acronym that gives you clues. To, well, thankfully, there's a useful acronym that can give you clues to important questions you might want to ask someone who you suspect of having carbon monoxide poisoning. And this acronym is COMA. Now, C stands for cohabitees and co-occupants. You want to ask a person you suspect of carbon monoxide poisoning if anyone else in their house is affected. If they are, this may raise suspicions of a possible carbon monoxide leak. Now, O stands for outdoors. You should ask the person if their symptoms improve when they're out of the building. If they do, then again, you may suspect a possible carbon monoxide leak from a device such as a faulty boiler or cooker in the home. M stands for maintenance. Again, the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning is much higher if their fuel burning appliances and vents aren't properly maintained. Finally, A stands for alarm. You should always ask the person if they have a functioning carbon monoxide alarm. Now, if you do suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, a person should be asked the following questions. Things such as, have they recently had a heating or cooking appliance installed? Do they ever use an oven or gas stove for heating purposes as well as for cooking? Have they had any ventilation changes in the home recently? For example, double glazing has been fitted. Have they noticed any sooty stains around the appliances or increased condensation? Do they do work which involves possible exposure to smoke, fumes or motor vehicle exhaust at work? So now we know about the causes and possible symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. What are the four ways you can try prevent it from happening in the first place? Well, number one is to get a carbon monoxide alarm for each room of your home that contains appliances that burn gas, oil, coal or wood. And I've included a link to some of these in the description box of the video to purchase if you don't have one in the home already. Number two is get heating and cooking appliances properly installed and keep them well maintained. Number three is make sure that your boiler is serviced once a year by a qualified engineer. And number four is keep chimneys and flues clean and well maintained. Finally, if you or someone you know is worried about carbon monoxide poisoning, stop using the appliances that you think might be making carbon monoxide, things like the boilers or cookers. Number two, open any windows and doors to let fresh air in. Go outside and finally get medical advice as soon as possible. Don't go back into the affected building until you've got the advice. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it or you learned something new, please remember to like the video, leave me a comment in the comments section and subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos. And until next time, bye.